Nightingale has only been out for a week and as expected like any game there's always some early teething issues, bugs and some methods to get insanely overpowered. Players have seemed to figure out the most bizarre strategies to get ahead and to gain the ultimate power by exploiting some oversight in testing or within the game mechanics they've just never thought to try and the players in Nightingale are no exception at all. Now if you don't know here we have one of the end game bosses extremely difficult to kill by yourself but how would you like to just walk up and one shot it? <laughs> yep there's an exploit currently in Nightingale that lets you become incredibly ridiculously stupid overpowered by being able to one shot any enemy in the game basically. And yes, it's definitely a bug, but there's a little trick to it, and it's a rather costly bug to perform, but man oh man, you can blitz out every kind of item, armor, melee weapon, potentially even your building materials could be made to be indestructible. So, we're going to do a deep dive and have a look at what this bug is, how to use it for yourself, what it will mean for the community. Let me know what you think about this exploit. There's been some comments thrown around to try to keep aspects of it, which I think could be kind of a cool addition to charge up or power up your guns. But what do you think? Let me know about what you think about about this exploit but let's have a look at the infamous one shot bug of nightingale or as referenced in the discord by the legends who have discovered this gimping your weapons out but first let's understand what this bug is just before we get into this i definitely don't condone using this in the multiplayer vault i did do it once just test but i won't be doing it again that would ruin other people's experience and what this can do to your game files or game is unknown to me so just be mindful if you do try this the consequences are unknown there might be none there might be something so just if you do try this do it at your own risk but it's always fun to kind of have a look at these things and investigate but the main takeaway is just don't ruin the fun for everyone else have a play mess around with it but yeah since we do some co-op stuff in vaults maybe don't go around doing it over and over again so first things first what is this crazy exploit well it's a rather simple to do in terms of the process which we're going to look at right now but what it is going to require is lots and lots of material so for instance we are going to build a weapon using pursuit we're going to have to mine a ton of pursuit so for that we're looking at around or realm between 60 and 80 and for this i went to the astrolade realm on extreme giving it a realm power level of 80 so that sort of sweet spot i needed to complete a few things in the astrolade realm so that was my choice but other good choices your herbarium gloom ascended but uh just making sure the difficulty is between you sort of like 60 and 80 is that sweet spot pursuit i would highly recommend if you're going to mine lots of things in a realm try get the forged card not the forged wood card that will increase your ore yield and quality at the cost of other materials affecting this this will increase your yield or your ore mining another option for when you're turning the ore into ingots is to play the industry card which will give you two ingots instead of one but those are just some little things to help with this process so in this tutorial we are going to craft a limet forward rifle and you can see here look at these damage range damage 2484 which is kind of crazy which is huge compared to if you were to just create this using all the best possible scenario situations you wouldn't even get close to this kind of range damage before we begin it's important to note if you do this too many times this process it makes the weapon insanely heavy and it won't be represented in the total weight it's a secret weight that you can't see and it will make you basically encumbered permanently so not permanently but while you have it equipped so the way to get around this i find is i'm just going to be using this sneaky little thing called moderate strengthening potion which increases your maximum weight this is very helpful so you can see here i'm just stumbling along and then if i apply it i'll hold on I've got um, too much other stuff. Now we put all that other stuff away. But with it applied, you can see on the side here, it's giving me decreasing my weight enough so I can run around. So I just wanted to point that out before we begin. But we'll just go through a quick overview of the process. And then we're going to drill down it into detail. Okay, so the process, right? So I've done the process on these ingots. And you can see here that the range damage, critical damage, and durability have all doubled when comparing to the original stats of Pursuit, which are 25, 7.5, and 15. So you can see there's a clear doubling effect by doing this this process that i'm about to show you okay so to start we, we need some kind of smelter we need something that we can craft that has an ingot and a metal tip or some other option you could use motor for example but it requires more resources but something that has an ingot and another component required so for this example we are going to be using pickaxe so in order to create pickaxes we need metal tip let's create say 12 metal tips so that is going to be 24 ingots to create 12 metal tips 
But keep that in mind because the compounding effect of doing this process will ensure that you need tons of resource to be able to pull it off. I'd only recommend doing this anywhere five to eight times or you would run into the situation of being over encumbered when you equip your weapon because of that secret weight issue that I mentioned. Okay, so we'll finish off this metal tip. The metal tips are finished. Now we'll go to the pickaxe on the metal tips. So I did craft a few before, so but we'll just we'll select 12 because that's how many we just created. And then we're going to need to go to ingots and we're going to need to go 12 ingots as well. Okay, so that's 36 ingots of pursuit so far. And we're going to craft and get 12 pickaxe, pickhead, sorry. Okay, so the pickaxes are complete. So now we're going to go to reclaim. And what are we going to reclaim? We're going to reclaim the 12 pickaxes that we just created, crafted. And now you can see here, we can only get six ingots back. So from 36 ingots that we used to create all this, we're only going to get six back. And this is the key point for this bug or exploit is that the compounding factor is huge. Okay, so if we wanted to do this, you know, four, six, seven times, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of pursuit ingots that you're going to need to do it. But that's the catch is that you will get an insane insanely powerful ridiculous weapon but it's going to take you some time to do because you're going to have to mine a ton of pursuit or any resource that you want to apply this method to so looking here we have durability critical damage and range damage that has all been doubled through this reclaim ingot exploit glitch oversight whatever you want to call it but the stats have doubled so now we're going to craft these six into back into ingot so then we can repeat the process again Okay, so now the ingots are complete and we can see here that they have been separated from the original non-boosted or gimp ingot. So we have a doubling effect here, but we've gone from 36 ingots to six. So that's a six to one conversion rate, which is pretty huge. So, so again, I recommend hundreds of ingots to do this. There may be better processes, other ways to do it. I'm just going to show you the method I've been using just to give you an idea. Then it's up to you. You can play around and muck around with this. So then what we would be doing again, just to illustrate the process, is that we would be once again making go, go, go we have to make at least two so we can get one ingot back so we'll go two metal tips and we're going to only end up with one ingot in the end of this so we've got two of those we can go two ingots and we need the uh, metal tip times two so you can see on the right there the stats change between the two different ones because one has been boosted the other one has been boosted as well but not as much now we're up to a hundred range damage critical damage of 30 and durability of 60 percent so keep in mind these are percentages and not um it's not like your range damage will increase by a hundred points it's percent percentages so it works a bit differently so you you might think you're going to get a 30 percent increase on your critical damage but it might be like a 0.3 or 3 percent or something like that so there's it doesn't work as straightforward as it appears okay so we'll put the metal tip in and we'll craft we've got one ingot so one ingot even though it's saying we have two that's right because i am playing the card as mentioned before to help boost your output of ingots that's a really key factor i should have mentioned and drove that home is that yeah i've been playing definitely using that throughout the process Okay, so we've created the two pickaxes and now we can reclaim them and those stats, so these stats here are going to carry on to the new ingot. So as a result, we end up with one ingot with 100% range and 30% critical damage and durability 60%. So huge stat boost compared to the original ingot. And then what we would do is we'd get enough of these through this process about six to eight times. For me, after eight, you get too overburdened, but you can get around that with some potions. But we would do that process as many times as you really would want to, and you would end up with a crazy boosted ingot. And then what we do is we use these ingots to then craft everything we need to, all the bits and pieces, craft the chest pot rifle. Everything we need to, to craft a rifle pistol or melee weapon because you can do this with any ingot if you wanted to do one you could do one with other ingots say the palisitic etched ingot which would give 30 percent melee damage now you could double this to some crazy amount and have a very powerful melee weapon but that's a quick rundown of the process now i'm going to show you how you can do the same thing with fiber and wood but it's very much the same sort of process just with varying materials is the next i'm going to show you how to do the same process but for wood but keep in mind when you're using boosted ingots throughout the process of boosting wood i believe it also adds more weight so just keep that in mind over this process we're going to be using a wood bundle tier 4 swamp wood crafting a range weapon so this will give us a 25 percent range damage 20 percent magic power stealth rating and fuel duration so this is not a bad option for boosting some of your range weapons tier 5 swamp wood i believe has a bit worse stats than tier 4 currently and that's because tier 4 and that's because tier 5 is still sort of in development and being added to the game at a later stage so in order to do this process we have a wood bundle we're going to convert that wood bundle into into lumber then from lumber we're going to go into yielded lumber then into pole and then into reclaim so again this is the method i've been using you could use a different method there might be a few other ways to do it but this is where i know how to so let's do that so let's convert a ton of wood go 32 pieces which is actually 64 wood we're going to convert that into lumber 
It's also good to note that at the moment I have Forge on, you'd probably want to change your Realm card. There is a Forged Wood card that might be beneficial, but at the moment it says the output type is Ingot. So I don't know if this will actually increase your yield for yield for wood. So I don't know, not too sure about this one. Here we go. So the card we'd want to use would be the Lumber Mill card. This card will increase wood yield, reduce time needed to refine wood products, and improve the quality of wood items. I'm just going to quickly craft a Lumber card. We'll grab a couple of them. So here we have the Lumber Mill card. So we'll increase yield and time needed to refine products related to wood refinement time decreased by 15 seconds so that's quite helpful will also give us better critical damage rain damage melee damage speed so this is pretty cool Dokey. So now we've refined the wood into lumber. Now it's going to go into gilded lumber. We'll add the tier 4 swamp wood that we converted into lumber and then we'll add the pursuit. Now this pursuit has already been gimped or boosted quite a few times. So we have a huge range damage and we'll incorporate it into this. Again, note this will probably make me too heavy. Probably boosted this ingot too many times. But we'll keep going with the experiment and we'll build as max of the gilded lumber because again we're going to have to convert it into poles and then into reclaim which will ultimately reduce us with only a few reclaim claimed lumber that will carry on with all the stats that we have here gilded lumber is complete now we will convert gilded lumber into poles and you can see here it's carried on the stats from the boosted ingot we'll grab eight of them so that 16 gilded lumber will produce eight poles Okay, so now we can reclaim this lumber. But before we do that, I just wanted to point out in during the process of creating the gilded lumber, we can just add in any ingot. It doesn't have to be boosted. However, including a boosted ingot will definitely increase the potency of your end product or the end lumber or stock handle. But you can also just boost lumber with a normal ingot because it will increase the attribute multipliers as well just by doing this same process of going lumber, gilded lumber with an ingot, just a normal ingot, then into a pole and then reclaim claim and then repeating that process will also boost the wood but this way i'm doing it i've already boosted an ingot i'm going to include that just to make it more potent but i have to be mindful that i may be overweight not being able to move a lot so i'll have to use a potion to counteract that okay so let's go reclaim lumber and we got we got eight poles that we can convert back into just some plain old lumber but we've got all the crazy stats here that will pass on to this lumber that is reclaimed Okay, so here we have the lumber that has been boosted and here is some other wood i boosted before but i've boosted this too many times but in both these cases these are probably going to be too heavy but i'll just give you the example anyway so what we would do next is we would repeat that process with the lumber that we've just boosted so we'd go tier 4 swamp lumber that we boosted and then we'd go to the ingot and you can see here that the range damage the range damage has increased if we compare it to the previous step to the second time we're boosting this lumber but again we are already using boosted ingots whereas it's probably better to do this just without boosted otherwise it's going to be a very heavy item at the end but i'll leave that to you to mess around with again the suggested cycle for boosting is about six to eight times and what i would do with lumber is i wouldn't actually include the boosted ingot i would just use a normal ingot or only use a boosted ingot once or twice in the process because that will add to the weight you won't be able to run around freely but for this example we would go through the process of going gilded lumber then from gilded lumber into poles then we would reclaim those poles back into lumber. And then we would end up again with much more or less lumber and we would repeat that process. Another important thing to note is that after a few times, you may notice that the numbers aren't updating or changing. So where the range damage, critical damage, all those numbers listed in the attribute multiplier will stop updating after a few times of doing this. However, do note that you are actually getting the increased range, critical, and all the other stats are increasing. It just won't be reflected in the attribute multiplier after a certain point. So you will notice they will stop updating. However, it is taking effect just to make note of that because this is an exploit a bug it obviously is not going to reflect because we're not meant to be doing this so then with this boosted lumber that we've just created we will create a stock so we'll go and we'll create a stock which just requires a pole it has all the crazy stats and there we go so the stock is ready to go for crafting this chest pot rifle you'll notice now that we already have the you were weighted down by your inventory if we move everything out and we just have the stock where it's not too bad but again once we build this gun we might be overweight next i'll show you how to do the same process but how to do it with fiber so for clothing and other similar materials so we'd go to a weaving loom or or your tier 2 version and we would start off with some plant fiber or alternatively you could use meat with meat you'd go over to your tanning station and refine that into animal fiber but for this we'll 
go refined fiber and we'll select our plant fiber. Just convert the whole lot into refined fiber. Okay, so from the refined fiber, we'd go into fabric and we'd use that fine fiber, convert it into fabric, and we would convert it into coating. So this is where it gets a bit different. So we'd have to head over to a mortar station. Your excellent or below should have coating. We'll convert all the fiber, we'll convert all the fabric into coating. Okay, so from the mortar station, once we have our coating, we need to head over to we need to head over to our lumber station, and we will need to go into coated paper. So for coated paper, we're going to also need paper. So I've paired some paper before, and we'll add our coating. And obviously, no boost yet, but we'll get eight of those. From there, we need to create foiled paper. So to create foil, we'd have it would head over to our weaving loom, and we would need to craft some foil. Now, you could use boosted materials here if you wanted, but for the purpose of this, we're trying to carry the stats from fibers into an ingot. So for foil, we're going to need. So for foil, we're going to need some liquid metal, which requires some essence. I'm going to use a slightly boosted ingot as well. Grab two of those. Next, we'll need a filigree, which requires wire. So we'll grab some wire. Now we have the wire. We'll create some filigree. I just realized we need to create the liquid metal out of precious metal. So for the ingot, we'll get a gold ingot and we'll go essence dust and we'll grab a couple of them. Okay, so we have our liquid metal, filigree, a paper. We have everything we need. So we'd head back to the Veneta weaving loom. We'd go to our liquid metal, filigree, and our coated paper. And you can see here that the stats are carried on from that original fiber. Then we would create, then we'd craft the foil. Okay, so once that's finished, we'd actually reclaim the foil. So we'd go over to our smelter and then you get kicked for being active. So we'd go into our we go into our blacksmith or any kind of smelter and we would go reclaim ingot and would reclaim the foil that we've just done that whole process on and that's how we would actually carry effects from things like meat and fibers plant fiber onto an ingot and then what we do is we would do the same process again but we would use the ingots that we've turned from foil back into an ingot and we would include those again and that would help in boost the stats that we got originally from the plant fiber or meat fiber so it's a bit of a convoluted process that one's a bit harder you can stack it indefinitely but this gives you a bit of an idea of the steps and processes so we'll just reclaim this ingot now the ingot we got back was gold because that's the precious metal we use so there will be a bit of a messing around to figure out what to use where to get the result you're after but this is just a general guide to give you a bit of an idea of how to start and do the process this will probably be fixed or patched at some point so if you do want to try it do it soon otherwise it'll be gone and rightfully so it's completely broken the game is just very very easy after you create a gun like this before we end the video we'll just craft the gun so we got the stock from that tier 4 swamp wood that we boosted. We got some boosted metal plate. And now we just need to, now we just need to create a shaft, create a barrel. I've got the refined actions already paired. Actually, no, I don't. We'll have to craft some of those. So for that, we need, so we'll craft an action that costs two ingots. We need some mechanical gears. We need two of them. Then we can get the refined action. Okay, so we've got everything we need. Now we can go craft. So now we can craft the Lee Metford rifle. So it has less rounds than the Winchester, but it does more damage per round. So it has a slower fire rate, higher damage, less rounds, about eight rounds. Winchester has 12 rounds, flies faster, does a bit less damage. But my preference is the Lee Metford. We'll craft that now. So we've got all the boosted stuff and we can see here, we're gonna get a range damage of 2000 off the initial base damage. So then we can upgrade this and we'll be able to upgrade this with our essence and have an insanely crazy powerful gun now note this build doesn't have anything that requires any kind of fiber and to be honest i haven't played with the mechanism of boosting fiber or meat fiber too much okay so got the gun and we we can see here because it's been over boosted it is already too heavy so if i use the if i use the moderate strengthening potion you'll see that it gets rid of it and i'll be able to carry some ammo and a few other things but basically i've made the gun too stacked or too boosted you could say and it's become too heavy but you can kind to get around it you just won't be able to carry much so you probably want to maybe stick to doing this six times getting closer to eight i seem to get too much weight but so looking at its base damage okay so do note when you look at the weapon damage here don't think that's entirely an accurate reading of the range damage so when we go to upgrade it might be but it doesn't look like it so we'll upgrade it anyway to tier uh, tier three We've upgraded tier two and these are the stats. It's looking very, very good. <laughs> the durability, what the hell? And there we have it. So we have the rifle with a 2,376 range damage, which is huge. Now, I don't know how accurate those figures are with a boosted gun, but uh, if we go test this out, and again, it seems to get heavier, the more uh, you upgrade it. Also keep in mind that we don't have any, we don't have any infusions or charms on it. Once we add that, it'll also increase the stats. Okay, so I've gone and applied some infusions on it. And we've got some crazy stats. So we'll test it off. off the sun giant in a extreme ascended realm the if we can just one shot him straight in the uh critical zone to see if we can get him to gonna try make a peace offering our guys attacking him 
and we did 29 million damage. Absolutely brutal. So there you have it. You have a boosted rifle in Nightingale that will pretty much one shot anything. And uh, see this cricket. See you later. It's gone. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> There you go. But as you can see, absolute weapon. But yeah, I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions or need some help, definitely let us know in the comments. Be, be mindful and respectful when you use this exploit. But uh, yeah, have some fun and I'll catch you later. Peace.